Welcome back to Fremonti Season 6, Episode 4. What a week and what a rush. Monday, we had Valentine's Day. Tuesday was short. Wednesday, the whole world was watching us with the superintendent. Thursday, we had our sip and paint during lunch. Parent conferences after school. And today, Friday is a minimum day. Oh, wait. And Monday, there's also no school. This is going to be heat. Since Monday, love was in the air. We sent our polls and fun facts department to ask our school about their Valentine. Let's check it out. Fremonti number four. In the light of Valentine's Day, we are curious to find out how many of our pathfinders have Valentine. All right, do you have a Valentine for this year? No. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't have a Valentine. No. Uh, no, sorry, I don't. Yeah. All right, you got a Valentine for this year? Ah, uh, yeah. Who? You. Word. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Valentine's Day is the day of love, friendship, candy, and flowers. It seems that sixty percent of our pathfinders are in search of love but 40% of our pathfinders are in love did you know that Fremont has its own gay straight alliance or GSA to find out more about this club we sent our clubs department to get the scoop check it out What is going, what is going, what is going everyone? Today we're going to be talking to GSA to let you know how you can be an active supporter of the LGBTQ community. Let's check it out. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mr. Del Real. I'm an English language arts teacher and an English language development teacher here at Fremont High School for the past three years. GSA meets in room 218 on Wednesdays during lunch. GSA is open for all students. Um, it's, a stu it's a group that was uh, basically aims for uh, students of the LGBT community to join, but it's also open to allies. Uh, I want the students to understand that uh, GSA is not a gay club. Um, it's a club that obviously aims for LGBT advocacy, but it's not specifically for uh, gay students. I don't think that everybody that comes here through these doors or, is, or their advisors or any other teacher who joins the club is a member of the LGBT community. Um, it's more of a social uh, support uh, it's here for social support and for social advocacy. I want GSA members to leave with the trait of being informed, uh, well advocated, and diligent uh, citizens um, of this uh, community. I want them to be able to be kind towards uh, members of, of the community of all creeds, dominions, and backgrounds. The importance of GSA is to create that nice environment for our LGBT students to know that there is a place for them here at Fremont, that Fremont is their school. Um, you know, we have to change the dynamic of, of homophobia in schools, um, ensure that our students know that they are loved, they are welcome, and they are accept accepted for their identities. Events that are being planned out right now by the club are more aimed towards June. Uh, which is uh, Pride Month uh, in the United States. But other events that we look for is National Day of Silence and uh, National Day of Awareness of STDs. All right, that's all. Thank you. Right. As love was in the air, our variety team did some research on the history of Valentine's Day. Mr. Producer, hit it. What is Valentine's Day? Valentine's Day is a holiday that's popularly observed as a day to celebrate love, especially by those in a romantic relationship. Valentine's Day is traditionally observed by exchanging gifts and cards called Valentines, and it officially became a holiday on February 14, 469 AD. Who is Valentine's Day based upon? St. Valentine, name of one or two legendary Christian matters whose lives seem to be historically based. He is the patron saint of lovers, epileptics, and beekeepers. Another common legend states that he's defied the emperor's orders and secretly married couples to spare the husbands from war. Where did the holiday originate from? Valentine's Day is thought to have originated from a Roman festival. The Romans had a festival called Lupercalia in the middle of February, officially the start of their springtime. Why is Cupid the figure that represents Valentine's Day? For the Romans, the character of Cupid was always a cherubic little boy who followed his mother's wishes to make people fall in love. We hope everyone had a good Valentine's Day. Class of 2022, do we have some news for you? 
Have you completed your FAFSA? I have. Time is money. You have until March 2nd for the priority deadline. Come on, seniors. Let's get this bread. Check out the following senior skit. Hey guys, Michael here. I had some problems submitting my FAFSA application from the College Center. Luckily, Ms. Pena was able to help me out. Here's my story. What's wrong, Michael? I can't afford these college tuition fees. It's... Have you applied for FAFSA yet? What's FAFSA? FAFSA is a financial aid application where you apply to see if you qualify for any grants, loans, basically any grants that you get is free money that you do not have to pay back. It's basically free money for you to continue with college. Really? Yes. How do I apply to FAFSA? Just go to FAFSA on Google, which the website's right here, fafsa.ed.gov. And yeah, we can get started on your application. What do I need to apply for FAFSA? You need to know your social security if you have one, your parents' social date of birth, uh, their, your parents' 2020 tax information, and basically everything else is just personal information about where you live. Where can I get help for applying for FAFSA? Well, Michael, you're in the right spot. You're in the College Center with Ms. Peña, so you can come see Ms. Peña in the College Center, tell your friends too. You can come see us anytime during lunchtime. I make appointments or Tuesdays after school. When is the deadline? The deadline is March 2nd, so as of today, you have 13 days to submit. So March 2nd. All right. Oh, hey, Michael, it's been a while. Hey, miss. Guess what? I just submitted my, fa my FAFSA and I just received $3,000 of financial aid. Yay, Michael! See, that's why we apply for financial aid. Don't ever let money be a reason why you don't go to college. All right. All right, it's time for everyone's favorite segment. It's time for sports, sports, sports. Sports, sports, sports. Let's just check it out. What's up today? I'm here with Jose Felix. Hi, Jose. So, um, what sport do you play, and what position do you play in? I play baseball for Fremont's varsity team, and I play third and short, and I pitch. All right. For the people that don't know, uh, what is your role on the team? As like your position? My role on the team is to call the plays at short to call the plays at third, mm. and to dominate in the pitching room. That's right. Uh, how long have you been playing baseball for? I've been playing baseball since I was four, uh -huh. including RBI leagues, other park leagues, and travel ball. But including high school, I started playing in a school called Washington Prep. But I knew the program here at Fremont was better. And I already played with the uh, recent players that I had back then, Alejandro, Gus, and Jerry, and Tony. I know the Fremont was a better spot. This is a shout out right there. Um, do you have any pregame rituals? All right, so first I wear my pregame Crocs. I listen to my, my pregame playlist, and then I'll, I'll kiss my bed a little bit. All right, that's hard. Um, do you think baseball will be uh, included in your life um, yeah. in the future? Yeah, of course. After high school, I want to make it my goal to play in college. Uh -huh. and uh, then hopefully after that? UCLA, and then from there, hopefully make it to the big league. How do you feel about Friday's game and then the 15 strikeouts against Westchester High? Going into the game, uh, my mindset was to go on the mound and dominate. And that's what I did, along with the help of my teammates. They, they helped put in runs, make me feel confident, and took the win. Today's spotlight highlights our new magnet counselor. Let's see what she has to say. Hi, I'm Miss Kim. I'm the new magnet counselor. Um, you know, it's fun, but it's kind of overwhelming. There's just so much to learn. A uh, new environment, new students, new staff. But it's um, been really exciting to, to start this new adventure. I chose to become a counselor because um, a couple of years ago, I was working in a at a software company just as an admin and um, I was feeling like I wanted to do a little bit more with my life and, and interact directly with people. Um, at that time I was volunteering at my church and the youth group and I really liked interacting with high school age students. So um, 
I decided to make a career change, so I, I took the steps to apply to a program and went back to school and really want to try to be um, the type of adult presence that's not a teacher, but you know, at a school to just guide students and help them to, um, you know, help you guys to find different pathways to your goals basically you know whether you want to go to college or to the military or straight to work um, there are a lot of decisions that you need to make to get there and I just want to let everybody know what their options are and what steps you can take to really realize your, your dreams and goals. My expectations um, not much right now since I'm just learning on the job I want to really try to get to know as many students as I can especially as many seniors as I can before they graduate. Um, make sure everyone's in the classes that they need to take. And also um, just be able to build some trust and rapport with uh, the students on campus and, and my fellow staff members as well. Before I decided to go be a counselor, I was an admin at an open source software company. And, um, and then while I was working on my master's program, I was a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> So, no, this is my first counseling job. Already. Sorry. As you know, Wednesday was out of the ordinary because our new superintendent was here. I got a chance to have a conversation with an LAUSD board member who gave us an insight into the hiring of our superintendent and what the district has planned for Fremont and South LA schools. All right, welcome back to the Fremonting, guys. And today we have an exclusive interview with... I'm Tanya Ortiz Franklin. I'm your school board member for LA Unified District 7. Okay, Ms. Tanya. So, um, overall today, how was your experience here at Fremont High? So fun, so welcoming. You know, I love coming to Fremont. I've been your board member for about a year, but with our new superintendent coming on his first visit officially as the new superintendent, I think it's really important that he got to see all the joy and the beauty here at Fremont, all the energy, and uh, we're all feeling it. We're all feeling Definitely. energized. Definitely. When you first thought of Fremont, how did you visualize it? Just like based off of Well, I'm lucky that I got to come here a couple of times. There's so much uh -huh. pride, there's so much tradition, but today was the first time I got to meet one of the alumni, or two of the alumni and uh -huh. the association. So I think, you know, Fremont just keeps blowing our expectations out of the water over and over again. But with the new superintendent coming, I think there's a lot of expectations for prioritizing schools like Fremont, prioritizing yeah. schools in South LA. And I fully expect to see that with our new suit. Out of all the, all, of all the other schools here in uh, South LA or just in general high schools that are, uh, that are part of LESD, what made you choose Fremont? I mean, I, I think it's, it's important that our new superintendent gets to see the diversity of Los Angeles Unified, but in particular, South Los Angeles has so much opportunity, so much joy, so much tradition, and it was great for him to see that at Fremont, so he can prioritize our schools like Fremont to make sure kids from here get to go to college and thriving careers. Definitely. Um, based off what the superintendent saw, how do you think he, was his first reaction arriving to Fremont at our school? Oh, he was joyful. He felt the energy, he felt the love, and he saw the, some great questions in classrooms. He understood also that a lot of our students in this neighborhood are recent immigrants, where their families are, and so the kind of stresses that adds to the families and the supports that schools need to provide. I think he's feeling very hopeful, yes. but I think he's also recognizing the responsibility that he's leaning into now with his new leadership to make sure that schools like Fremont have everything they have so every kid can go to college. Definitely. I also had a chance to catch up with our very own new superintendent, Mr. Alberto Caravallo. He also gave us a little warning about the hurricane of the changes that is about to hit uh, Los Angeles Unified. Um, as the new superintendent at LESD, how do you feel about this new position that you recently gained? It's both a, a blessing uh, and an honor. Uh, I feel humble. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I'm anxious to uh, to get the ball rolling, to get That's this important work done. So, uh, very proud and very pleased to be here. My second question is, what kind of changes uh, or any differences can we expect in the system of LESD this upcoming year or in your, in your term that you have? So, in LA you have earthquakes, right? Yes, sir. I come from part of the country where we have hurricanes. Yeah. My name is Alberto. Hurricane Alberto is hitting Los Angeles. Big change is coming. Yeah. All right? Thank you. Yeah, you Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Welcome. I love that. Well, Mr. Caravallo, we look forward to the, to the change in LESD and we wish you much success. This has been From Martin Season 6, Episode 4. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell for notifications down below for every time we post a new video. Remember, here at the mall, we find a path or we make one. We're out. Stay tuned for From Martin Number 5. Happy Friday and happy President's Day. And Monday, no school. After
involve the positivity rate in LAUSD at this point for students is at 1.1% for employees at 1.5%. That's far better.